everyone, and welcome to Real Talk. I'm your host, Pat Terrio, and you all know how I feel about youth mentorship. We've got Coach Brian Howell here from West Lawrence, who has an excellent program that I'm excited to hear about, and I'm excited for him to, we're excited about him sharing it with you today. How are you doing, Coach? I'm doing well. How are you? We're doing very well. Listen, so glad to have you here um, at the studio today and excited about what you're going to tell us about this mentorship program. Yes. All right. Now, I want to know how you started out with this program and um, and what it's been doing for you as a leader of it. Tell us about it. Well, we started this program um, four years ago, and um, one one day, it was actually five years ago, I was thinking about it, and I went to graduation. And I kept thinking, I said, I don't see any undergraduates, mm-hmm. you know, just minority other undergraduates. And finally, you know, I was asking guys as they were, you know, crossing the stage and stuff, or asked a couple before they graduated. I said, what are y'all doing, um, you know, graduating? Man, I don't know. And mm-hmm. I said, man, well, it's like a week before graduation. You know, when the ones I asked at the graduation, okay. I don't know. I'm like, you don't walk across the stage, you don't know anything? Mm-hmm. And so I didn't want to be the person that kept talking about the problem. You know, they thought about a solution. So mm-hmm. I talked to, um, you know, a couple of administrators about it, and they didn't think at the time it would, you know, it was mm-hmm. benefit us. And so late, later on, um, next year, we had a new principal coming, uh, Mr. Garanto. Mm-hmm. And he came back to me and said, I heard about the program you wanted to start. So we started this program up, and, and you know, it's called Character Education and Leadership. And mm-hmm. we started, um, you know, with um, 12 guys. Mm-hmm. We did a mixture of 9th, 10th, and 11th, 12th grade guys. And so by doing that, uh, we just set different standards and stuff, went, you know, find some stuff that would benefit the guys. Mm-hmm. and. And by doing that, it just became a great program for us, and it just keeps growing every year. Now, so four years ago, so you were the brainchild. You thought about this now. Now, you're already a, a leader to uh, young men anyway. Let them know what you're already doing. Well, I coach girls basketball and girls track, and then mm-hmm. I coach, you know, just I teach health and uh, physical education at mm-hmm. school. So we do a lot, and then I have, you know, my sons and stuff too, so. I just I just do you know I do a lot with you know with the young people in the community. So you're you you already involved in the community. You teach. Mm-hmm. Uh, you're a, a husband, a father. I mm-hmm. mean, and you're coaching. And so now you've got this program. Right. How difficult was it, or was it difficult for you to start because you had to have people to believe in it? Well, um, and originally it, it, it was kind of difficult. You know, a lot of times you know we had to pay a lot of. Uh, Money out of my own pocket, mm-hmm. you know. And uh, Mr. Gonto, and they they donated a lot. Also, along with um, Coach Hall and a couple of uh, mm-hmm. people within the school, and so we just it really started out kind of difficult. Then one day, Mr. Gonto he said, "Coach, you need to put this in the paper." I'm like, "Well, I didn't really want to do this. Just you know, have it in the paper. I just mm-hmm. want to do it to help the kids out." Right. But but you know, he's but because he's in leadership, you know, he said, okay, I, "I said we're gonna put it in the paper. Mm-hmm. Put it in the paper." All of a sudden, we picked up a couple of sponsors. Wow. And so um, one of the biggest parts we have is Morris Bank, Mr. Mm-hmm. Uh, for Spence Mullers, and mm-hmm. it's been great for us since then. And so what started off small, mm-hmm. you've seen the progress yes. through the years. Yes. I mean, we've, uh, we have a 100% graduation rate of that's every guy that's come through the class. Uh, we have 19 out of 24 guys that have come through, have, have going to college or in college, uh-huh. uh, in some type of technical school. The other guys, they're uh, pretty much, you know, they're in the workforce. But they're doing something positive. Positive. And yes. I think, and this is what it's about. Mm-hmm. Character, yeah. education, mm-hmm. and leadership. Exactly. So what are the criteria as far as getting young men um, into this program? Well, we, we, have, we go by teacher recommendation. Mm-hmm. Also, administrators, they may see some guys that may need in, you know, be in the class. What I do sometimes is I walk down the hallway and see some guys every now and then. I just look at it, I said, um, sign up for this class. <laughs> He's like, why? I said, don't worry about it. You're going to be in this class next you year. You bully them into the program, Coach Al? Pretty much. But it, it's a productive bullying. <laughs> okay, I Productive got bullying. Productive so, bullying. It, yes, Remember yes, that. yes. So, that's, and so by doing that, you know, it's, it's benefiting a lot of the guys. Mm-hmm. And I think that, you know, we just, I know we can't change everybody. Right. But we try to change, you know, just try to work with so many. And I've just been thankful that, you know, this program just keeps growing every year. This sounds so great. Now, tell me about the parental support because even you're working with minors, mm-hmm. and so you need the the parents to be supportive to be on board. Tell me, or you know, guardians. How's that been? Well, that's good. I mean, I, the parents they're always supportive and stuff, and pretty much uh, these guys, you know, where we need, you know, the, the parents. Okay, we're gonna do that. If we gotta go somewhere, they have them there, and it's just been a great thing for mm-hmm. us. And I mean, really, the parents are always they they, they like this program. Because it gives, and I like to say, it takes a village to raise a child. Right. And so we're the extended village. 
extended uh, village. With extended and then you've got your little eleven year old son. Tag, yeah. He's a tag along. Yeah, he, he, along. He, How does he do? He comes along too. Now some places we don't take him. Yeah. Like we went to Fort Valley's homecoming. We didn't take him there. And he was upset about that. Oh, he can't handle Fort Valley. No, nah, not coming. not yet. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, but he's going with us to Georgia Southern, and um, you know, really, he's, he's he does a lot too. I do a lot with him. Mm -hmm. But just really, I just like to bring him along too, just yeah. to see what the older guys are doing. I think that's pretty cool for him to see Dad in his element. You know, working with uh, older uh, young men, and mm -hmm. and I think that he been there's something that he's grasping from that. Mm -hmm. Something he's grasping from that. Now, and also you're talking about these places that you've gone. Mm -hmm. So you've taken these boys places. Right. Tell us about that. Well, like I said, before we gone to, we went to Georgia Southern, went to Fort Valley State. We've gone to a college fair up in Atlanta. Went to Atlanta a couple of times. Um, I would go down to Morris Bank and do some visits down there. Mm -hmm. We do visits around here within the community. And just really showing these guys just different places that's out there and yeah. different things. You know, it's more than just Dublin. Yeah. That is so true. It, it, it's more than just doubling, yeah. and um, it's just su such an amazing thing. I remember taking one young man to Vo Fort Valley, and he was like, um, I, mean, I didn't really didn't think it was a big deal. To me, right. it was Fort Valley. We were riding back home one day. I'm taking him home. He said, uh, man, he said, no, I thought about quitting school. I said, for real? He said, why? I said, why? He said, man, you know, I'm 16, ninth grade. Wow. Well, what's the point? But then he said he went out to Fort Valley State, mm -hmm. saw something different. Yeah. All of a sudden, this young man ended up being an honor roll student. Look at that. Changed the mindset. And think about it now, he ended up being uh, one of our undergraduates this year. Honor graduates. Honor graduates, and uh, he's ranked number 48 out of 264 and kids. And you know, that's where it counts. That's where it matters, Coach, because you're talking about someone who was thinking about quitting school. Mm -hmm. Now he's highly ranked, mm -hmm. honor graduate. Mm -hmm. That's what it's all about. That's when you know that you're being effective. Yes. And this is an effective program. Yes, it is. Well, we're certainly wanting to meet some of these young men okay. that you have here in the studio. Who, who's the first one we're going to meet? First one we're going to bring up is um, Jalen Gordon. Jalen Gordon. Yes. Now, Jalen, how long has Jalen been with this Jaylen, program? Jalen, this is his second year with the program. And uh, Jalen is uh, just another young man who um, did a great job. Ended up um, at, Actually, he signed a track scholarship yesterday. Oh, my goodness. Hi, Jalen. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Now, you and I have met before. We've met before, Jalen. Now, he just told me something quite interesting. Now, tell us tell us about what's going on with you and how this program has affected you, Jalen. Well, uh, this program, it, it really helped me start speaking because when I first came into high school, I didn't like to talk at all. And uh, Coach Howell kind of forced me into doing it because we played games like stuff like debating in class, and mm -hmm. it got me a lot better at speaking, and that's why I appreciate this class. And, you know, it's helped you use your mind because you're smart, so you've had to utilize your mind with this program. It's more to than just going places, and, and, and this has done something to you on the inside. Yes, ma'am, it has. All right, now he just said you've got a track scholarship. You just signed a track scholarship. You need to share. Is that secret? Is that hush-hush? No, ma'am, it's not. Okay, tell it's us not. about it. Uh, I actually signed with Georgia Regents yesterday, and uh, I'll be running straight with them pretty soon. I'm going to have to give you a high five right here on the air. Is that cool? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> That is wonderful. Well, we're certainly so proud of you, Jalen. And so you started with this program last year. Yes, ma'am, I did. And, you know, Jalen, tell us what changed with you from when you first started the program to where you are now, getting ready to go to college, go to college on a scholarship. What has changed with you? Uh, first off, like I said, I, I didn't like to speak right. at all. And uh, being around a lot of people that, I guess, were easy with talking, it allowed me to open my mind to what they were doing and, it just allowed me to just open my mouth, like mm -hmm. I said. And now, I mean, I don't have a problem speaking, but, you know, I hold back sometimes. That's <laughs> right. But, you know, this has given you really a maturity, a much more maturity as well. Yes, ma'am. All right, Jalen. So you're going off to college. You're going to be running like Forrest Gump. You're going to be tearing <laughs> it up for us, making your family proud of you. And um, now, was he your – what else – what can you say about this coach right here? as far as with him being the leader of this program and what he's instilling within these young men? Well, I mean, Coach Howell's been an important person in my life. I remember um, when I had an incident at home and I came to school and he just, he really helped me feel better. Uh, mm -hmm. Me and my sister were going through some stuff and, you know, he was just, uh, I guess, at the time I didn't live with my dad, so mm -hmm. he was just a father figure for me. Wow. That's huge, mm -hmm. Coach. You know that, right? Mm -hmm. When a young man says that about you, um, that you've kind of stepped in that role to kind of really be there for them. That's huge. 
Thank you. All right. Well, listen, Jalen, we're certainly so proud of you here and everyone out there. So good luck with you with the coming up, you know, going to college, being a college man and, and running. What do you want to major in, you think? I'll be majoring in physical therapy. Of course you are. Very good. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is Jalen. All right. Thank you so much, Jalen. Thank you. We too. appreciate you. All right, Coach, who else do you have coming up? Next one I have, um, Jatonia Dupree. Jatonia? Jatonia. Jatoni. Jatoni Dupree. Yes. All right, come on <laughs> come on around here, Jay Tony. You know, sir? Come on, come, come on a little around. closer to us. How are you, son? I'm fine, how are you? Doing very well. Now, Jay Tony, tell us a little bit about yourself because we really want to know how this program, how you've benefited from this program, okay? Yes, so tell us a little bit about you. Well, when I first started this program, I was a bad child. Well, I wasn't really bad, but I, I wasn't staying on track or whatever, and my grades wasn't so good. But when I got in this crack called how he stayed on me, like he was on me hard, and he taught me how to uh, go get my good, get get my grades up and um, be a better person in life. Now, Jay Tony, was this uh, difficult for you to transition like that? I mean, did it take some time? <laughs> oh yeah, yes ma'am, <laughs> yes ma'am. Cause at first, like when I first started this class, like really nobody couldn't tell me nothing. I was my own person. And I really didn't listen to nobody. But Coach Howell, he sat down and he helped me. And he talked to me, and he showed me how to be a better person. And what I'm listening here is that, Coach, you've taken the time out with these young men. Yes. You haven't taken no for an answer. Right. You haven't allowed <laughs> their attitudes to deter you from staying on course with your mission. Right. All right, now, Jay Tony. now tell us about what your future plans are. Well, after I graduate from high school, I plan on going to Georgia Southern for um, business and finance. And after I graduate, I plan on getting a job at Morris Bank as an accountant. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So here are one of your partners, you right. know, Morris Bank. And, and, you know, here he is. He wants to bring it back here home, bring it back home. Well, we're so proud of you. Thank you. <laughs> Certainly proud of you. Now, how does that make you feel when, when they're talking about – how you turn their life around. Oh, it's just a, it's a great film because, you know, and it's just not me. Like I said, it's just so many people within the school, mm -hmm. and really the guys just believe in themselves. Yeah. And really, I don't, you know, like I said before, I don't want to just, I always want to just kind of build them up. They've been, mm -hmm. they've been beat down so much. Right. And, we and yes, I, we you know we say things sometimes. I have to, you know, grab them up every now and then and say, come here, man, let's calm down. You have to snatch you snatch up. Snatch you up. But, you know, it's, it's a good way they know it's all, about, it's all love. Mm -hmm. And I know they, they know I do anything for them, and but mm -hmm. for the most part, and I always told them if you when you get to um, probably March, April, or May, beginning of May, yeah. you are gonna know where you're going yes. if you follow our plan. Oh, that's wonderful. Mm -hmm. Now, Jay Tony, what kind of message can you give to some other young men out there to really um, encourage them? Because you have done a, you've done a what, 360 turnaround. Yes, yes, what can you say to encourage the other young men out there that may be struggling in some areas? Well. It, it all starts when you get in ninth grade. If you keep your grades up from ninth grade to twelfth grade, I promise you can do anything you want to do. Everybody going to help you get scholarships and everything. Just stay focused. When you first get in high school, you got to stay focused the whole time, all the way through. All the way through. That's a wonderful mm -hmm. message. Well, certainly we appreciate you and we're proud of everything you're doing. Thank you. This is Jay Tony, everyone. Thank you, son. So impressed. Mm -hmm. So impressed with these young men. Now, who do we have coming up next? Next is uh, Quan Plummer. Quan is one of these guys that... Really, he had, he was doing everything he's supposed to, but he's kind of like a, a, a positive mentor within mm -hmm. the school setting. Some, and so we always try to bring guys in who really is taking care of his business anyway. Mm -hmm. But we, we find little things that we need to help him with, too. Right. And little so, tweaking. Little we, tweak. we, yeah, we, you know, he just had to tweak Quan a little bit. <laughs> so everybody needs a little help. But he, so he was my tweaker. All right. <laughs> well, well, Quan, we're so glad to have you here on, on the set. How are you today? I'm doing pretty good. Now, Quan, tell us about now. He said that you only had a few things that you need to kind of work on um, with this program. Tell us what has changed in you. My attitude, for one. Mm -hmm. Um... I I I'll, I'll snap about anything usually, but Coach Howard he's taught me to like just think about it before I talk, and now I just I think about everything. I think things through now, mm -hmm. and um I used to have a big problem with, like talking in front of people, looking mm -hmm. eye to eye, and I done changed all that now. Like we used to play games and class like debate games and mm -hmm. think about it. He give us a certain scenario and he'll put us through it. And you have to seriously just sit there and think about it. And like I, the first time I played, I remember I got frustrated and just wanted to quit. But now I just think things through. I mean, that's the biggest thing you need to do is just think things through. You know, I keep hearing this, and this is so impressive because you're you're learning a maturity. You're you're learning to be more mature. You're learning. You're gaining wisdom because, like you said, you would snap people up. Yeah, 
in a heartbeat. And it probably wasn't really kind, was it? <laughs> hey, I didn't try to do intentions, but it's just my attitude. I just had a quick temper. Right, right. I just had a quick temper. Right, and that's, and that's understandable. And so what this program has done, it's helped you calm down. Yes, it's helped you mm-hmm. think. And then you speak. Yes. And so do you consider yourself a mentor to other young men? And tell us why. I try my best to, like, I mean, I can't say I came from a house that was down or whatever, but mm-hmm. I like the... When I see people down, I think it's just right that you help them out. You don't just mm-hmm. pick on somebody that's down. You just, you always, God wants you to do treat people how you want to be treated. Right. So that's my biggest thing. When I see somebody down or see somebody hurt, and I just want to treat them how I want to be treated. So that's just something you should do. I mean, it's just not something that Kohal just had to teach. It's just something you should do anyway. Right, right. But with that, he just egged it on and helped me do it even more and mm-hmm. better. Mm-hmm. And that's how I picked up strong in that surgery area or whatever. Now, Quan, is it easier for you to kind of notice when young men are, are, you know, like how you used to be, is have a quick temper? I mean, is it easier for you to pick guys out like that now to, to oh, kind of see yeah. where they could, what path they could be leading down? Oh, yeah, it's easy. I mean, you could just look at somebody and tell they're going through something at home or how they just hold themselves up in front of others or, I mean, they just, mm-hmm. they was, some, some had the same effects like I was doing. It just snapped real fast. Where it's just, mm-hmm. it's easy to tell. And just, the best thing to do is just help them out and just talk to them about it. Absolutely. Now tell us, you know, we want you to give a, a message to the young men out there. You've already been giving messages along the way, but is there any other message you want to make sure that some young man out there um, could possibly use from what you've gained? Don't hold things in. Get it out of you. Talk to somebody about it and just be friends with everybody because life's too short. It is too short. Life's now too what, short. Are, what, are, what, are your, uh, what are your goals after, after graduation? What do you plan on doing? Attend, but also stay and take up psychology. Look at that, the study of the mind. <laughs> Love it. Well, congratulations to you. We're certainly proud of the work that you have accomplished um, throughout your, your uh, time within this program, the things that you've learned, and what you're definitely helping teach other young men. Yes, ma'am. You know, ladies and gentlemen, I hope that you all are understanding and able to to really see the impact that mentorship programs uh, are are doing for young men, not just young men, but other programs for young women as well, and how important it is as we as adults that we take those reins and do what's necessary. Now, Coach, you've got another young man here that has definitely gleaned from this program. Yeah, this is um, Jarvis Burnett. Um, pretty much he's like more like the quiet one out of mm-hmm. the group. Hey, you know, when it comes to um, talking and stuff, Jarvis, uh, he lets his actions speak more than his words. Is that right, Jarvis? Yes, that is right. Now, yes. could you say a few words with me, Jarvis? Yes, it won't be painful at <laughs> all. Um, Jarvis, this is what I want to know, and I, I'm sure the people out there want to know. What, how has this program impacted you? Well, he got me thinking about college. And um, in his class, he taught us how to tie a tie, so I learned that. Uh, you know, that's a very big skill <laughs> that even there are adult men that cannot tie ties. They're still wearing the bow ties that clip on there (laughs) and the ties that clip on. There are are adult men that are still doing that. And what do you think that you could take from this that could help someone else? I don't know. But there's some things that you've learned, Jarvis, and you you may not be able to to say them right now, but this program is highly effective. It's highly effective. Now, Coach, tell me this. Tell me what do you plan on accomplishing with this program like, from what you've already accomplished, what are some of your goals that you want to have reached with this program? I mean, honestly, I really just want to continue to let it grow. Mm-hmm. And I would love to see, you know, it, it'll work well at any school. Mm-hmm. And I just want everybody to understand that, you know, you just got to be willing to, you know, step out there and help. And it's not really – we always think about looking at just the standards and right. the core and everything. And that's, and that's important. Mm-hmm. But let's, we need to look at the whole child itself. Right. And if I can just get George to come back here for a second. And a lot of times people – Jarvis is one of the guys that came his ninth grade year. Mm-hmm. 16, people said he wouldn't make it. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and, and really, you know, it was like, wow, why would you say this about this, this young man? He mm-hmm. went through a lot. He said yeah. he had a lot. But it got to the point where Jarvis was one of the first ones to go to class. Mm. Never hear about being tardy. Look at that. I mean, really. He's speaking for you, Jarvis. It, you know that. It got to the point where he's, he's started making honor roll at his freshman year and just kept going at night. Nice, I you know rank 48 out of 264 This is in number class. 48 right yeah, here, Yeah, that's number 48. And like I said, 40, they say he wouldn't make it. Wow. And he's here. 
And the thing about it, actually, and, and Jarvis, he's always been like, never had a few, few words. Mm -hmm. I was laughing at him the day coming up. I said, Jarvis, is funny. I said, you talk now more than you do your ninth grade year. Is that right? So, so instead of saying one word, he's saying ten. Now you're saying but, ten. <laughs> but, every four years, every yeah. four years, you add nine words. And you, that's good, Jarvis. But, so keep it up. But keep he's, he's just such a, you yeah. know, he's, he's what his class is all about. Yeah. And, you know, like I said, we had him his fresh, as his freshman year. He didn't mm -hmm. really need it. He did what he was supposed to. Mm -hmm. And we're just so proud of him. Yeah. And so really... That's what it's about. And just uh, what school are you going to, Jarvis? The Arts Institute. What is the name of it? The Arts Institute. The, uh, that is awesome. And what are you going to be studying? Audio production. Jarvis, now that's pretty cool. <laughs> and that's certainly within this time, age, and time, audio production, that could take you anywhere. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you're into music, but producing music videos and, and all kinds of t like television and, and even working at a station. I'm just saying, Jarvis. And it's so, <laughs> it's so funny because I, like Jarvis is ideal for him, too, since he doesn't like you know talk that behind much. The scene. Behind the scenes. So guy. You don't even need this microphone. Me, I'll just talk all day. <laughs> But you, you handle behind the camera. That's fantastic. Yeah. So you're doing something, you found a field, a profession that you know that fits your personality, something you're passionate about doing, and this program has definitely helped you to get to where you are. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay, very good. Thank you, Jarvis, so much. <laughs> <laughs> We're proud of you. <laughs> All right, Coach. Now, right. listen, thank you so much for, for everything that you're doing here with this, with this program right. and, and other things that you're doing. I mean, you know, this is just only a part of the, you know, the things that Coach Howell has going on. But just to listen to these fellas and the impact mm -hmm. that, that this program is making. That's what makes it all worth it, wouldn't you say? Exactly, exactly. I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't trade it for the world. I mean, it's a, a good. It's gonna be some good days, some bad days, but my good days outweigh my bad days. Mm -hmm. so I'm not gonna complain. Mm -hmm. And these guys, I mean, every day, just make you happy. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Well, listen, ladies and gentlemen, that's all the time we have for today. Mm -hmm. I appreciate you, Coach Howell. We mm -hmm. appreciate you very much. Appreciate the fellas coming in and, and speaking us with, this, with us today about how this program has benefited. Thank you for all the, uh, the sponsors out there yeah. that are sponsoring this program. And if you would like to sponsor it, please contact Coach Howell concerning that. Please, thank you for watching Real Talk, and please keep watching.